pipe family. Uh, this is Captain Botten from Pico 3161. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions online about different types of exercises, what exercises are, some of the modifications that you can make to the exercises, um, and then also what I have here in my home gym. So um, I figured I'd do a video in the dark rifle fashion. I've um, got my dark rifle gear on, so I'm going to walk you guys through what this space looks like. So essentially, it's 22 feet by 12 feet. Uh, and our garages have two, two uh, bays. So this is the weight room, and then over there is my shop. Um, and so what we have here is just kind of, my wife let me uh, design it the way that I wanted, and so this is the equipment that I have available here. So if you follow along with me, basically this whole space here is for my body weight exercises. I got a yoga mat down and a little pad for handstand push-ups, so I do a lot of the body weight stuff over here. Um, over here I have the fitness gear rack, so this has a pull-up bar with a couple different variations for your hands up top. You can modify with some bands, and then it has the squat rack, it also has the catches if you need it, and then a fitness gear bench that I bought along with it. These are rep fitness bumper plates that are great for dropping on concrete or horse mats, um, and then an Olympic bar. And I was able to order that stuff online and get it shipped directly to the house. And then the uh, fitness gear stuff I got down in Yakima at Dick's Sporting Goods. So I have an old heavy bag here that I try to use as much as I can. I have a TRX band that's mounted to the wall along with uh, wherever I write up my workout for the day. Um, just put on a little notepad there. This is a Schwinn Airdyne bike. There's some other Airdyne bikes out there, um, but I was able to get this one for pretty cheap. So this is the one that I like. If there's one piece of equipment that you can have in your gym, I think the Airdyne is the way to go. Um, eventually I'd love to get a rower, but this one's good for right now. Um, over here, these are the Bowflex adjustable dumbbells. So they go anywhere from five pounds up to 52 and a half pounds. They're a little spendy, but for what you get from them, um, they're pretty awesome and you can uh, adjust the weights really easily. I have three kettlebells, one's 53 pounds, one's 35 pounds, and one's 26 pounds, and then a 20 inch box, which you can jump up uh, by stacking weight plates on top of it if you wanna go to 24, 26, 30 inches. Uh, I have my double end speed bag here uh, for a little bit more of the accurate boxing um, when I'm getting a boxing workout in. We've got some pads for hitting when I'm working out with a partner, some MMA gloves, and then some heavier boxing gloves. I also got my kit here with the plates in it for when I'm doing the Murph workout or uh, just trying to get um, kind of a more tactical oriented workout in. And then down there I have an 18 pound weight ball, uh, the wall ball to do the wall ball shots up on the wall, and then uh, an ab wheel. So that's pretty much what I have for my equipment here. All together, if you put uh, about two grand, into a space in your room, you can pretty much get set up just the way that I did. Or you can find stuff that's on uh, Craigslist that somebody's selling because it's just sitting in their garage and you can uh, build a pretty sweet little weight room for yourself. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of different abdominal exercises here for you. So we'll start out with the sit up. And I like to use my hands so that I can keep the intensity up. Do a butterfly sit up. Crunches, bicycle crunches, V ups, and hollow rocks. This exercise is called a handstand push up. I'm going to do a strict handstand push up, modified handstand push up with a kit, and then I'm going to do a wall walk right after. So, first one handstand push up, strict. Kip and wall walk. Next, I'm going to demonstrate some uh, leg exercises, some lower body exercises. We'll start out with the air squat. When you do an air squat, chest up, weight in the heels, eyes forward, keep your neck neutral. I'm going to squat back, squat down below 90 degrees. Drive my hips forward, keeping my weight in my heels throughout the whole squat. And I can do that by wiggling my toes, so it helps adjust some of that weight backwards. I'm generally keeping my toes pointing forward. Some people prefer having their toes pointing out with a wider squat stance. I prefer trying to get those toes pointed forward so I stay more stable throughout my squat. I'll also demonstrate some lunges. We have the rear lunge. Again, trying to get 90 degrees, keeping that front leg straight and perpendicular to the ground. We have our forward lunges. Again, going 
going until that front leg is perpendicular to the ground and not overextending over the knee. And you have your jumping lunges. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys some uh, different variations to use for kettlebells. Um, on top of the air dive bike, I think that the kettlebell is probably the most important piece of equipment that you can have in the gym. There's so many different exercises that you can do with it. So I'm going to start out with the kettlebell deadlift, weight in the heels, chest up, eyes forward. I'm going to squat down, stand up with it by bringing my hips forward to the kettlebell, moving the kettlebell in a straight line. And then we'll go into the American kettlebell swing where I'm going to swing it up to the overhead position where the kettlebell is going to be aligned over the back of my heels. We have the Russian kettlebell swing where we drive our hips. And notice that as the kettlebell is coming down, I'm squatting to receive the kettlebell. You can also do some single arm swings. Thumb goes back to the rear at the bottom of the swing. And then finally the kettlebell tater. It's going to be a Russian swing to a goblet squat. You can also do some Olympic lifting type variations with the kettlebell, including the kettlebell clean, the thruster, and the snatch. We start out with the clean. We're going to turn the kettlebell so that the horns are perpendicular to our body. Thumb's going to go to the rear, and then I'm going to zip right up like I'm zipping up a jacket. And I'm going to rotate my elbow underneath to receive the kettlebell. So we start out here, zip, clean. We also have a thruster where we'll clean, up, squat, press. And then finally the kettlebell snatch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys some barbell work. Uh, so I'm going to go through a bunch of different exercises here, but we're going to start out with the deadlift. So when I do the deadlift, I'm going to walk up so my shins are touching the bar. My feet are just wider than hip width apart. And I'm going to pull the bar in a straight line from the ground position into this hang position right here in my hips. And you can do that where you have both hands pronated, you can have one supinated, one pronated, um, or an inverted grip if you want. But essentially what you're doing is getting the hips way back, pull the bar a nice straight line, and then it's going to follow the same path all the way back down to the ground. There's a bunch of different exercises you can do off of the deadlift. You can do a sumo deadlift where you stand with a wide stance. You can do a deficit deadlift where you stand up on some plates so that you're going down lower than what would naturally be, just picking the bar up with the weights on it. Um, so there's a bunch of different variations you can do with the deadlift. From there, I'm going to go into a clean. So a clean describes where we're pulling the bar from the ground up to the collar in a smooth athletic explosion motion. And I'm going to catch the bar in a squat position. So here comes a clean. You have a hang clean, where we start out in the hang position and then catch it in the squat position here. You have a power clean, where we're only going to catch it in about a quarter squat position. So the same rules apply, you have the clean, then the hang clean. Here comes the power clean, and the hang power clean. And to practice that motion, what you really need to get capable of is the shoulder shrug, and then like making sure that the bar floats up to that collar position. Okay, and you do that by exploding through your heels um, and getting your elbows under nice and quick underneath that bar to catch it in a right position. And the next things on the uh, barbell that I'm going to show you are going to be the sprint press, the push press, the push jerk, and also the thrust. So these are uh, presses where we're moving from the collar position to the overhead position uh, with varying levels of explosiveness and, and varying levels of power. So, um, the first one that I'll show you is just going to be the, the strip press. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to power clean the bar up to my collar, where it's here. Strip press, my elbow is going to transition down, head makes way from the bar, and press the weight to the overhead position. For the push press, I'm going to do a quarter squat to get some momentum into the bar, and then finish in the overhead position, but I'm not going to catch it in the dip. So this is a push press. And then finally we have the push jerk. And the push jerk is going to be the same motion with the dip, then the drive, but I'm going to catch the bar in a quarter squat position. Finally, we have the thruster, which is going to be a front squat and a push press. Start the ball in the collar, 
position, front squat down at below 90 degrees, drive up, explode, press the bar up overhead. That's a thrust one. The next things I'm going to demonstrate are going to be pull-ups and pull-up variations. So I'll walk through a few different ones with you um, and how we can do some accommodations with it by using bands or by using jumping pull-ups. So we'll start out with the strict pull-up, pronated hands, pull up till your chin's over the bar. From there you have a kipping pull-up where you're going to add a gymnastics motion into the movement in order to kip your chin up over the bar. And really when you're doing a kip, you're going to get your chin up over the bar and you're going to press away and you're going to make kind of a half moon shape with your body. So you reach up to the top and then you do a bench press away from the bar, swing through, let your head go all the way through, chest forward, feet back, and then you're going to kip back to up to the uh, chin over bar position. And then finally you have the butterfly pull up, which is going to be a full circle motion as opposed to a half moon motion. Um, if you really want to add some speed to your pull ups. Now you can modify pull-ups a number of different ways. You can use a bench to stand on it and then use just a little bit of the leg to help yourself up. But you can also use a band by placing your knee or your foot inside the band and then using that band to assist your pull-ups so that you can continue repetitions beyond what you would usually do with muscle failure. The next exercise that I'm going to show you is called uh, a wall ball shot um, or a wall ball. Uh, Typically, the wall balls are going to range from like 12 to 20 pounds. So this is an 18 pound wall ball shooting up to about 10 feet. Um, and really what you want to do here is the same motion that you did on a thruster with a full squat and then that push press, but you're actually going to try to shoot the ball up when you reach the top of your squat and then catch it on its way back down. So I'm going to bring the ball up just underneath the chin. I'm going to kind of make a goblet squat arm with my hands. I'm going to squat down below 90 degrees and shoot the ball up. Get a little bit of a bounce there at the top so that it jumps back into my hands. Now wall balls are also great because you can do a number of different exercises with them. We can do push-ups with one hand up, one hand down, um, but also you can practice your clean exercises. So if you don't feel comfortable transitioning to a bar just yet, you can actually do uh, clean type variations on a wall ball, okay? And that's working through that shoulder shrug up, quick elbows underneath and catching it in a squat. So I start here in the hang position, Shoulder shrug up towards my ears, rotate my hands underneath, and stand up with the ball. And if you notice, the ball's not rotating my hands. So I'm actually relieving the pressure on the ball throughout the movement, and it should stay facing the same direction. And you can practice your cleans that way. You can practice your hang powers, you can practice your uh, power cleans all the way from the ground, or you can practice that full clean motion. The I'm going to show is going to be a box jump. Uh, so this is a 20 inch box. And really what you want to do on a box jump is you want to rock back towards your heels and then you're going to explode up off your toes, draw your knees towards your chest, and reach those toes forward to the box and then come up to the standing position. So it looks like this, rock back, jump up, stand up all the way on top of the box. And like I said earlier, you can add weight plates on top of a 20 inch box to make it higher as necessary, but 20 inches is great for workouts. It's also great for doing weighted step ups if you have a bar on your back. So you're going to come up to the standing position really isolating that quadricep muscle. You can do burpees over the box, or I'm gonna drop down to a burpee, and then jump over. Burpee, jump over. So I've shown you a bunch of exercises on the bars, but everything that I've done in here um, on the bars can also be performed with dumbbells. Okay, you gotta work with what you got. Or if you have kettlebells, um, everything is kind of interchangeable, but there's some things that are great for the, the dumbbell that maybe wouldn't be so great for the bar or for the kettlebell. Okay, so some of those exercises are going to be just your stereotypical bodybuilding type exercises for hypertrophy. We're talking bicep curls, we're talking tricep extensions, talking flies and rows, okay? But you can also perform those cleans with either one or both of the dumbbells if you have them. Um, and you can also perform your deadlifts or your presses uh, and even some of those Olympic movements like the snatch, okay? So dumbbells are, are versatile, kettlebells are really versatile, and, and bars. So if you can't get all of them, um, but you can invest in like one of these adjustable sets of dumbbells. You can do everything that I just demonstrated in here with these as well.